All right, guys, I wanted to talk to you for a couple of minutes about the importance of keeping a Glock stock. Now, there are some things that you can do to your Glock that is perfectly fine to do, and there are some things that I don't really think you should do uh, unless it's like a range competition or just play around Glock. Like, if you're like some of us, you, you may have several Glocks at home, like me, and in, in that case, that's okay. I have one that I'm gonna show you. I've got several Glocks behind me, and I'm gonna show you one that I use as what I call a play around Glock, and uh, we'll talk about that. But there is, guys, a big importance on keeping a Glock stock internally. Now, several people that train in firearms training always say the same conclusion. Any Glock that's ever failed, one Glock was just completely almost rendered useless, and the guy had went and changed almost every part inside the gun. Luckily, he told the trainer he brought all the stock parts with him. The trainer said, go, go back to your car, swap every single part out to stock, and then come back. And the guy came back, and the gun ran the rest of the class. Now, here's the thing. That's what's kind of worrisome about this. Because you may put these aftermarket parts internally inside of a Glock, and you don't realize when you go to the range here and there that these parts can fail you. But when guys go to a training class with these Glocks and shoot 1,500 rounds, 1,200 rounds in a weekend, that's when it starts to show when all the bugs start to come out, so to speak. That's when it really shows you whatever can go wrong will go wrong. And you don't want that to happen at the worst case scenario. While you can do whatever you want, I highly recommend that there's upgrades that you do not do to your carry gun or your home defense gun, something that you depend on for your life and your family's life. First of all, let's talk about some upgrades. You know what, though? I was, I was going to talk about some upgrades that I think are okay and that are fine and some that aren't. But let's go ahead and, and talk about what is not okay. And I do have a Glock that I'm going to show you that had failed on me several, not several times, I'd say probably four times. And one of only two Glocks to ever fail on me. The other Glock I'll do a story time on. It was a, it was a police trade-in gun that had been used for 13 years on duty. And I'll tell you, when I bought the gun, the guy sold it to me for like some outrageous price of like 200 bucks. And he stated that the gun was failing and he couldn't figure it out. He just wanted to get rid of it. And it, I fixed it. It just took me a small amount of money, barely any money at all. And I completely fixed the gun to like brand new. Um, if you want to see a story time on that Glock, let me know in the comments below and I'll give you a separate video of a story time of, of the broken Glock that I had that, that, that I fixed. And, and I'll tell you what, it was the first time I had ever actually seen this in, in a handgun. And I don't know that I'll ever see this again in my lifetime, but it was something that can happen to any handgun, but it's just extenuating circumstances. I'm going to get about, I don't want to get into it now. I'm going to save that for a nice story time video. And guys, my rear view mirror uh, foam holder is here. It's perfect. It's at the right level. I tested it. Everything's perfect. Maybe I'll throw in a picture of it right now. And it's going to work great for all my vlogging. And it's just going to be something that's going to be amazing. It's going to take it up to another level on the channel here with me being able to do what I need to do. Okay, so let's talk about what you shouldn't do. Okay, so this is one of my play around locks. What I, what I call a play around lock, or what that means to me, the term play around lock, that's a lock that you have that you just put in the safe. And this is just an extra G17. I just do um, upgrades to it. Well, we call them upgrades. They're not actually upgrades. The, the stock parts are the best. So we'll say we downgraded this. So I did downgrades to it. Play with it at the range. Um, had the barrel uh, gold titanium coated, which is really cool. Threaded barrel, lone wolf slide. Just a bunch of stuff that you shouldn't do to a stock Glock. Internally, though, what, you, what, what I recommend that you don't do is um, different strikers, different uh, striker spring weights, different recoil spring weights, even different recoil springs. Now, the polymer guide rod that comes in a stock Glock is perfectly fine. This is a bone stock to the bone Glock 19. You can take this gun out of the box. You can take it to the range, do all you need to do. You can carry this, protect you, your family, your loved ones. You can carry this every day. This is this is great. You go on duty with this thing, whatever you want to do, okay? This is a stock. 
G19. Now, the reason it has the polymer guide rod, they made it with that. There is flex to it, it does save weight, and that's the way they engineered it. Now, I hear guys that'll say, well, you know, so-and-so did a video and they had to keep passing it back and forth to these guys and they did a thousand round torture test. And after a thousand rounds, that not one guy can do, but it took several different guys, because no, no one guy can pull the trigger a thousand times that fast and have all his magazines loaded. They said the guide rod melted and it dropped out of the end. This is true, but you know what? It's humanly impossible for one person to do the thousand round torture test uh, like they did it, because guys had to rest and rest their finger in between. You might be able to do it, but the gun wouldn't be as hot when you did the thousand round torture test because you wouldn't be able to go as fast. So basically, a guy would bang, 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 as fast as he can, bang, 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 rip off rounds, put in magazine. As soon as his hand would tire out, they would bring in another guy. So it took, what was it, five guys? It took five guys, a thousand rounds, and somebody there loading the magazines to get a guide, to get a polymer guide rod to melt out of a gun. So if, you, if you're ever in a situation where you're shooting a thousand rounds that fast, you got more troubles than a guide rod. The, so the stock guide rod's fine, the polymer. I definitely would never change spring weights on, on, on this gun. The striker, leave it alone. I know they got like titanium strikers and different spring weights for the striker. Don't change that. You could end up like primer strikes when you least expect it. Don't change your striker spring weight. Um, they have uh, drilled out strikers that are lighter. Guys, if you train with these guns, you're gonna be able to hit what you're shooting at, okay? I, and, I, and I hate to be that guy, I hate to be that guy, but if you're not accurate with the Glock, you need more training. Putting in a lighter striker that's drilled out, a lighter striker spring, a titanium safety plunger, lightening everything up to try to compensate for your lack of experience, it's just, it is what it is, guys. Like, I, I really, you know, that's, that's all I can say. I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to make fun of anybody. I wouldn't do that. Um, I want to help people. I train, I'm not a gun trainer, but I help people. I take people to the range. I show them how to shoot. Just a friendly gesture, something I like to do. If, if you get enough, enough time behind one of these, you don't need to do all that to make your hits, you know? Yeah, it does help. Yeah, of course. Anytime you lighten up the trigger, it helps. But with, whenever you lighten up the trigger and you play around in here, you're also... You're also making that equation into the unreliable aspect further and further. You're pushing it further and further into the unreliable zone, which means that you may shoot it a thousand times and it may be fine, but then in the next hundred, it may, it may hiccup twice. Now, what if you needed that? What if that was a critical time when it hiccuped on you and you was out on the street if it's a carry gun? So this is a bone stock G19. You can just take this out of the box, guys. You can put it by your bed. You can carry it on your side for your CCW permit and this will protect you and your family all day. Just train with it. Train with it and get to, get to know it. Now, we're gonna kind of jump back and forth here. Let me go into changes too. I won't call it upgrades because that's subjective, but let's go into changes that I think you should do. Changes to a Glock, this is my Larry Vickers, love it, would be that, that, that I think not only are good, but, but I think I are, not only they're good, but I recommend would be sights, okay? We all know that the stock sights on a Glock, they can be used and they can be used well, but they're definitely not the best. And we know that changing the sights on a Glock, like this Larry Vicker, the Vicker sight, let me go ahead and all these guns were checked before the camera was turned on. These Larry Vicker sights on here are very nice. Also, I will show you the uh, Trijicon HD. I want the new HDs though, but these are the Trijicon HD and something like that. That's a highly recommended change to a Glock that, you, that I think that, that someone should do. Now, something you could do, but you don't have to do, that I kind of like to play around with, and that would be a custom, but it has to be by a reputable person that knows what they're doing. That'd be a custom stippling job, like this 5B Gunworks basket weave. Undercut here, gets my hand a little bit higher, got big hands. Um, love it, guys. I don't know how good this is gonna show, how good it's coming in on the camera, but, um, 5B Gunworks. If you're going to get a stipple job, make sure it's somebody reputable. Let me show you a Glock that I got a stipple job on that I don't like. I did this some years ago. I don't like this. This, <laughs> my, my cousin Nick, one of my best friends ever,
But uh, my cousin Nick, he's he's a very cool guy. He's just like me in the gun world. He's he's a guy that I would trust to train people. Uh, you know, anybody that I know, I I would have no problem saying Nick will train you to shoot. Nick will help you with this and that. I I I, I trust him that well. There's not a lot of people personally in my life that I know like Nick, but. Um, he's, he's a great guy, but, uh, he called, he made up the name for this. He calls it the pine needle stipple. And what it is, is they just, anybody could do this. They, they just took the fine tip of a, of a soldering iron and just put all these dots in there. Yeah, I actually paid for that. That's, you know, we all have our little mistakes and our little things that we did, you know, back in the day. And, the, you know, that's why this is my play around Glock. But yeah, I don't like the pine needle stipple. It just, it's not that great. It looks uniform. It looks kind of cool from a distance, but when you get up close, the pine needle stipple is not that great. Here's some excess big dots. We're gonna, uh, this gun's hot, so I'm gonna go ahead and empty this one out. You know, I wanna pay attention to what I'm doing, so we're gonna clear this gun out. This G43, this is an awesome gun, guys. If you want a little carry gun, you want something that you can pack anywhere you go, you can use this for an ankle holster. You can use it on, on for an inside the waistband. Uh, you could use it, in, it basically anywhere you want. You could appendix carry this. This gun is gonna work for where, however you wanna carry it, whether it's ankle, waist, or pocket carry. Even pocket carry is great with this little guy. So G43 is a very versatile gun that you can use in a lot of different ways. Had a guy ask me about the grip. He said, hey, what's, what's, what's going on with that gun? He said, I seen it on on video, he goes, was that just the camera, the lighting? No, what this is, is this is the Brooks Tactical A-Grip. It's, it's, it's a grip that never took off because some of the big guys didn't promote it. You know, some of the big YouTubers or however you want to say it. I mean, I don't know. I, um, I'm a big YouTuber, been doing this for years, but um, like some of the guys that, that you know, they're with, you know, a million subscribers never promoted the Brooks Tactical A-Grip. I love it. I've had it on this gun uh, for probably two and a half years. It gets better. Look at how close it fits. It's such a close fit. You can see the Glock outline underneath and all the little dimples in the grip. It's form fitting. It has never ever came loose at all. And it just, if, if you sweat or any kind of moisture, it, it's tacky and it has a soft feel to it. Uh, my cousin Nick calls it crushed velvet, <laughs> the crushed velvet grip. I love it. Then on here, I have the excess big dot night sights. I'm gonna point it back here on the other side of my shoulder. Excess big dot night sights, highly recommended. Love those. And let's talk about something else. Now, this is, um, well, let's go into another uh, change you could do to a Glock that uh, I would be for. So you keep this Glock 19, you keep it stock. Okay, that's fine and good. You say, hey, I want everything stock. I wanna use it just like it is. Well, you can also go ahead and throw a light on there for your nightstand, Surefire X300 Ultra. And that's something that you could definitely do to a gun and will, it will keep it, uh, it will definitely keep it nice and reliable for you. And you know, that's not gonna affect anything on a Glock. So that's another thing that you could do. We'll just, we'll just use the word upgrade because that's what everybody says, but that's another upgrade you could do to a Glock. It's definitely within the realm. There may be something I'm missing here. I'm trying not to take too long with this video. Like I said, stippling's okay if you get a reputable guy and you get the right stipple job. You know, don't go half-butted, don't go cheap, get the right one. The best grip frame that was ever put out by Glock was this Larry Vickers 2 that they used to call it the RTF 2. That is the best grip texture I've ever felt on a polymer handgun in my life. I would I, There's absolutely nothing that I would do to that grip to change it whatsoever. That is the best handgun grip I've ever had in my life on a polymer gun would be the RTF 2 from Larry Vickers right from factory. No changes ever needed. Here's my play around Glock. This is a Glock that has failed on me before. Now, keep in mind, this Glock is a used police gun, okay? This, is a, this was a, originally a G17, it was a police gun, and then it was a test bed. They tested some kind of Jaeger brass guide rod or something in before I got it, and they, these guys took it to a gun club and they shot, I don't know, a few thousand rounds through it or whatever. But here's what happened. I got it and I started messing with it, and uh, this was be years ago. Started playing with it and uh, did a bunch of different different things to it. One thing that I did to it, now this is back in the day when I, I got this back when it still had the stock slide on it. Uh, I put in a lightning strike titanium safety plunger. Now, why, what difference does that make, you, you may ask? What, what is, what's, 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 what's the titanium safety plunger gonna do? 
Well, what happens is, is as you pull the trigger, this little peak right here, we'll call it a bird's head, that lifts up. As you pull the trigger, that lifts up and pushes the safety plunger up and out of the way so the striker can come forward right here. So when this is lighter and smoother, it gives the trigger pull a little bit lighter, crisper, smoother feel, believe it or not. It just does. It gives it a lighter feel. This titanium piece weighs less. Uh, the spring's different. It's, there's a little spring on that titanium striker plunger, or the, on that uh, titanium safety plunger. There's a little spring in there. And believe it or not, the, 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 they changed the weight of that spring, and they made it a little bit looser. Or they made it, you know, they made it a little bit less, a uh, little bit less compression, and then they put in a titanium material to, to do the uh, safety plunger out of. And that trigger pull is a lighter trigger pull, and you can, you feel like you can hold the gun a little bit more steady, you know. And like I said, it's one of those things that oh, you can overcome with training anyway. Well, what had happened was, um, it, it kind of shocked shocked me pretty bad because after I did that, I was out shooting it with, with someone. I had two failures and he had one failure. I believe it was, it was stove piping. And I'm like, now we just don't know. I'm not an engineer. I can't tell you why the lightning strike titanium plunger would cause, would cause this to stove pipe, what malfunction it did, how it affected it. I, I'm not an engineer, but all I know is that when I went to change in the internal parts on this guy, I seen a few failures. You know, like I said, the other Glock, that I got for 200 bucks that the guy thought was a doorstop that I fixed. Um, that's gonna be a story time Glock video. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really not for changing the internal parts on these things, guys. Like this stuff of this Zev, you know, you see this big company like Zev and they got the striker with the drill holes through it and it's made out of a lighter material. Not for me, they got different uh, striker spring weights, not for me. Well, what happens if you need it to go bang and it just goes click, then, then what are you going to do, right? So stippling is okay, and definitely night sights. Tri I want to try the new Trigicon HDs. So Trigicon HDs, or any kind of night sight of your choice, a weapon light. Um, guys asked me about should they put on extended takedown levers and all this. You know what? I'm not going to tell you not to, but I don't do it. We don't, as far as I'm concerned, we don't take Glocks apart enough to worry about these little levers up here not being long enough. It's just, we just don't do it enough. I mean, if I was doing this, you know, every couple of hours or I had to do it every, twice a day, then maybe I would, but, you know, I don't know. But the extended slide stop lever, eh, your choice, whatever you want to do. I, I use the over-the-top method. Always have, always will, which is you're shooting, if the gun runs dry, you bang, come over the top, bang, and this gives you this gives you a little bit more force to chamber around. So there's a couple good things with that. Number one, you're not using fine motor skills, okay? So if you were in a stressful situation, or let's say that you were somebody broke into your home and it was several people and you were firing off a lot of rounds and you needed to change a magazine. You don't want to use fine motor skills. You want to use gross motor skills, which would be gross motor skills would be you're taking your whole hand and coming over the top. Instead of trying to hit this little lever right here, this wee little tiny piece of metal under stress, you're coming all the way over the top and going like this. Number two, when you use the slide stop lever as a slide release, the slide is going from its point here forward. The only inertia it has is from this point forward. So we're going to use it, and from there forward is all you got. So when you go over the top like this, and you're going to uh, rack in a new round, you have more power. I call it the power load because you actually pull the slide more rearward. Watch. See that? That was a good over a quarter of an inch, and then you're letting go. You got that much more force to chamber that next round. Do you need it? Don't know. Don't care, but you got it. All right, guys, this video went way too long, and I'm sorry about that, but can't wait to show you guys my new vlogging setup in the car. Till next time, guys, this is DOF. See you real soon, guys. Have a great weekend. I'm out.